Train to Busan was released in 2016 and is one of the most celebrated zombie movies in modern era. With all the acclaim, it sat on the periphery for us. You know, you hear all the noise about something and then your interest wanes and you never get around to it. Almost a decade after the release of this movie, and that is no longer the case for us because of a suggestion from one of our listeners from Instagram, Icarus Standard, who put this on the list as being one of the best zombie movies on par with Dawn of the Dead, Shaun of the Dead, and Return of the Living Dead. With those heavy hitters, we knew this was something that we all had to see. I'm Rob. I'm Mike. I'm Matt. And we watched Train to Busan to see where this stacks up in zombie cinema. So Matt, why don't you just take us through what this movie is all about? All right, guys. So from the back of the box or that raspy guy that would always talk in the 90s, I'm going to try it. A man, his estranged daughter and other passengers become trapped on a speeding train during a zombie outbreak in South Korea. What did you all think when you read that? Wait. Well, <laughs> well, anyway, what did you all think when you read that? So when I first saw it, it looked like the most basic movie you can ever imagine. Like, it just says nothing about what this movie is. I mean, obviously, it's the plot. But, like, it's so generic. It doesn't, like, grab me at all. That is very true. I I remember seeing, I never saw the trailer for it, but I would always see the scene of him running with his daughter. And I just was like, oh, it's just another zombie film, but they're doing the zombies from 28 Days Later. Like, that was all I thought about. And I like, I really like Korean films. Um, I think a lot of them are really good. Some very disturbing, like Snowpiercer. But I I didn't I wasn't like so interested in this one. I was like, uh, it looks just like a zombie film on a train. Like that's that's the gimmick, you know. Was I wrong? <laughs> like, was I wrong? And Mike, what, what did they... you think when you read that? Uh seemed pretty boring, uninspired. Um, funny enough that so it came out after Snowpiercer, right? Yeah. Yeah. So like for me, having seen that and like really liking that movie, I thought it was just this weird like kind of take on that i thought you know the the train setting seemed like kind of interesting but also i kind of thought it was like oh this is becoming a thing now because snow piercer um had that element to that movie so yeah i, I kind of saw it and kind of shrugged honestly like i didn't even bother with a jerk off motion it was just like eh, whatever and you know i think that was my problem too is that I read the description i've seen i've seen so much dialogue about this movie everywhere and i was just like well why i I read that and i'm just like okay it's a zombie movie like you you look at any of those other movies that we haven't on the list and i mean you can already understand why they would be iconic and this one just felt like bland and on top of that i feel like you can find this movie wherever you want like i literally like typed in like where could i watch this movie and it was just like a whole list of all these different things that would like pop up every single streaming service has a, a version of this so um so yeah so when i saw it i was just like eh okay I, i'm not too interested so yeah so we read the box weren't too impressed but then we all checked this movie out and i wanted to, each of us to just give your opinions on what you thought of the movie after actually sitting through it so I wanted to start with you first, Matt, because you're a zombie fan and a horror fan just like I am. So um, I'm curious to see, you know, what what did you think of this? I thought this movie was awesome. And like I said, it's a dad movie. And it's funny because my son is in the room right now and I was thinking about him a lot with the movie. Um, And I watched it on a train. So it was kind of creepy because of the fact that we were going past all these platforms. And I just kept thinking these like the zombies were awesome because they were just like creepy. Like, how the fuck are you going to survive? And I didn't know if it was going to get like kind of dark, like we were saying with uh, like Snowpiercer or like other Korean films. They usually go like like sad endings or super, super dark. This movie was like a great like just like a good like a perfect movie and just like that whole everything 
kind of happened. You kind of knew everything that was going to happen, but you still enjoyed it. Like, you know, for instance, the dad that was uh, going to be a father, and he's like the big tough guy, and he's awesome. And he's also, it's funny, he's in the movie Eternals as Gilgamesh in um, the Marvels movie. And uh, it was just like, he has this line, and I wanted to read it. And um, he goes like, I bet you never played with your daughter. And he's talking to the main character who doesn't really, he's estranged to his daughter. When she gets older, she'll understand why you work so hard. Dads get all the bad rap and no praise, but it's all about the sacrifice, right? And then he sacrifices himself. And then the end of the movie, the dad gets it. Like, it's like all the themes tie in, you know? And I'm telling you right now, and I mean, we're going in full spoilers, right? Like with those, if they killed the fucking kid and the pregnant woman at the end, I would have hated this movie. But the fact that like she sings the song that she wanted to, her dad to see, it was just fucking awesome. Like just a really well-made movie. And the action was just so cool. Like when they were fighting on the train, the three guys, the, 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 the baseball bat kid, the soon to be dad and the dad, I was like, this is awesome with the riot shield. You know, I was like, this is fucking cool. So that's my uh, recommendation. Cool. What about you, Mike? Yeah, I was really pleasantly surprised by it, to be honest, because I think with a lot of zombie movies, you know, there, there's formula. There's a formula that is variations kind of on the same kind of trope. So, um, you know, there was it seemed a little bit predictable in the beginning, just kind of like, you know, there's usually something that it seems a little bit odd. It's like the world is falling apart a little bit behind uh, in the background of people, but they don't necessarily notice it. So like that kind of like for me, it's like, OK, it's like a sweet spot because that's how most zombie movies are. But also for me, it was kind of like, all right, this seems a little bit uninspired. So actually starting off, it wasn't really grabbing me in any way. But then um, kind of once they actually introduced the zombies and what I what I ended up liking about it, honestly, was that there wasn't a whole lot of focus on the like how that came to happen, because I always feel like in some movies, zombie movies, they like, you know, they kind of that's the big hanging mystery. It's like, how did this happen? How could we contain it? Um, and that didn't really seem to be a big focus, which is actually kind of nice, because then I felt like I started focusing on the characters a lot more, which is, I think, really the crux of the movie. Um Matt, to your point, what I like too is, or with the callbacks throughout it as well. You know, they they mention these things that just seem like throwaway lines, but then they end up coming um, into fruition later on. Um, I think the one thing I really liked about it, honestly, was just that like the characters were very flawed. Um, you know, they had these good elements they were trying, but like there was nothing oh, super. Re yeah, it's nothing really redeeming about all of them. Like there was the you know that one guy that soon to be dead who was like. Man, when he took his shirt off, he was a lot more jacked than I thought he was going to be. And, you know, he had kind of that, you know, that kind of like that hero element to him. But everybody else, they were just kind of like, they were just kind of there. And like even that, um, that the like the main, not the train conductor guy, but the guy who ends up being like the heel of the movie. Like he had this very interesting descent into madness um, where like he just seemed like an asshole, but then it just kept ramping up more and more so. I think for me, I was just really pleasantly surprised with the story itself. I felt really invested in the characters. I thought the play on zombies was really cool, just kind of the more immediate conversion to zombie. It's, you know, it wasn't this like long drawn out scary, thing. Scary, dude. That was shit. Yeah. Like when they're like about to break through the glass and it just, they start coming out and they just start running at them. I'm like, and they, their arms are all twisted and shit. I was like, that is fucking scary. <laughs> Yeah, and I mean, we'll probably talk about, you know, maybe some some of these scenes, but like, um, there was like, you know, I think it was when they were in the train station when they thought they were, you know, they were going to get out of the train and get some reprieve. And there was this one shot of one of the zombies that just kind of like, almost like kicked up like from the floor, but it was like a very fast cut. But it was just really creepy. I thought it was really well done the way they kind of animated the zombies, which was, uh, which is particularly cool. So yeah, overall, I was pleasantly surprised. I didn't think I'd get that invested in the story. Um, and, uh, I think the other thing for me too, like I decided to watch it just with the subtitles. So it was like with the original audio. And I think that also helped me get a little bit more into it because, um, you know, like I felt like I had to pay attention if I wasn't watching it actively, um, you know, I might lose something with the dialogue because, you know, I'm not familiar with the dialect. So, um, I think that also helped me be a little bit more immersed in the movie because, um, even though there was things that seemed kind of repetitive or predictable in the beginning, like you really do have to pay close attention to it if you're going to understand 
anything that's happening. So did you both watch it with the subtitles? Yeah, or? I watched yeah, it with yeah. the subtitles. I like I like serious films, like especially foreign films, to watch in the subtitles because I feel like you're getting the real acting from the actors. Whereas like if it's like a goofy kung fu film, I don't really care if it's dubbed. But like a movie like this, I felt if it was dubbed, it would have really taken a lot of the drama out of it. Yeah, I agree too, because like this movie had I not had I watched it dubbed, I think would not have had the same impact at all because I could see myself just based on the plot alone being like, uh, OK, cool. I, I've seen it before and I won't like really pay attention to it. And that uh, that really did make that level of, immer of immersion like really pop for it. So um a couple notes that I had as well from my viewing, because I, I absolutely loved it. I thought that this was a fantastic movie. I was shocked by it just because I just kind of went in with low expectations. Like I said in the beginning, like when everybody says all these great things about something, you sort of like, uh, like, all right, cool. I guess that's nice. Or I, I guess it'll be OK. And like for this, I just thought that it was just going to be one of those like, oh, they have cool action scenes. That's why everybody cared about this movie. But it's not that at all it was not a an action movie in the in that sense and it wasn't a zombie movie in that sense i mean there was so much heart to it that i think made this really stand out what i found really interesting is that you mentioned all the callbacks and it just reminded me of Shaun of the dead because this is like a serious right. version of Shaun of the dead everything that happens in Shaun of the dead it's a build That's up a to point. it and the dialogue the the scenes everything kind of repeats itself in reverse and that's exactly what this movie did. I mean, even with that, um, the main heel of the movie, one of his first lines was telling the the little girl, like, you know, stay in school and like, don't be a dropout or something like that. And it's like, it really put into perspective everybody's story arc right there because he was so focused on himself and he was so focused on his mission versus being focused on the overall. And he and, like built to that and then you can just see his character just descending into that madness throughout all the movie and in her she's just the innocent player in all of it and she's just absorbing all of it and now this is what ends up happening and just to see it all kind of like culminate there Matt, you, you had a thought yeah no to continue on that what i really liked and i feel like a lot of american movies don't do this but other cultures do this is that they kind of showed how like working together does work. Like it actually benefits to be together. Whereas like, I feel like, you know, like the walking dead, it's always like, Oh no, man is the worst enemy and stuff like that. But this movie kind of showed that, that it's like the father's company was the reason why this thing came out and he was a selfish dick. And then all of a sudden it's like, he, he saw like what he did. And then like, you know, when the little girl's like, all you think about is yourself. And he finally starts changing. He's helping the pregnant woman and stuff like that. It was just cool to kind of see for once. Like, I feel like all these movies, it's always like, Oh no, everybody has to be out for themselves. This and that. And this one was like, no, look what happens when people work together. Like the only reason they fuck up is because of the guy being a selfish dickhead. Right. And then even thinking about that is the fact that that main heel went on his what his story arc would have been had he maintained being that selfish prick. If he if he just continued, like, I mean, even he pulled the, the girl aside and he was going to try to take her into like a different like corridor or something away from the rest of the group so then he can get out safely. And then she was like, what are you doing? Like. You know, here's everybody else. Like, we're a team. We're all in this together. And, like, he, she called him out on it. And, you know, he would have had, well, he ended up having a similar fate. But, you know, he got them to safety in the end of the, the movie. So that was, you know, that's his heroic arc where he would have gone into the the other side and been the total heel had he um, done anything differently. So uh, a couple other notes I wanted to make on this one was... Uh, that I just jotted down as I was watching it. The girl no sold the Wii. I mean, the Wii was a big deal to me <laughs> back in 2016. So, uh, well, she, but she has it already. You she did, but them? like, like you got to look at the bigger picture. I mean, now you're like, oh, okay, well, I, can, I have a second one. But 2016, it's like, wasn't it Wii U though? Come on, let's let's 
you know. No, the Wii was still a pretty big uh, it was deal. Still pretty big. But wait, know. was it wasn't it the Wii U? I mean, did they have a a black version of the Wii overseas? They did, or maybe it was a Wii U. I don't know. But either way, yeah. you shouldn't know so on and then no sell on Nintendo system. The, the schoolgirl um that was with the baseball players, she's a pop a K pop star. I re- I read that, so I saw it on the little Amazon thing where it says all the info. So I thought that's like a cute little like, oh, that would be like one of a you know a singer here playing right. a movie, you know? Right. Um, actually, talking about music, I thought the score sounded a lot like the Resident Evil um games and movie soundtracks, which yeah, I thought was totally. kind of cool, and I liked that a lot. And um, that they kept going into different, like, you know, different rooms, like kind of like Resident Evil, where it's like yeah, yeah. each each compartment was a different thing they had to deal with, you know? Yeah. Oh, yeah. tell me, like, how cool it was that, the like, I like that the zombies couldn't, like, figure out how to open doors, and then that, like, they couldn't see when they went in the tunnels. I thought that shit was so cool, because it's like, they were, everybody was, like, smart. I feel like a lot of times, it's like, they always make a character intentionally stupid, but None of them really made bad decisions. It's just that it just sometimes shit doesn't work. And I'm like, why can't they do that more in other movies? You know, actually, that was my lessons that I wrote from this movie were don't be a deadbeat dad, care for others and stay out of sight of zombies. So that all I think those are it. very good points. <laughs> yep. Um I ended up after watching this, I, of course, now kind of like went into as much as I possibly could around this movie. (laughs) And Matt's currently getting attacked by his own kid. Um, And I decided to watch the uh, Joe Bob version of this as well, because uh, it it was good. It was uh, the last drive in. And um, I mean, he basically was like, this is one of the best movies that you can see. And, you know, as I mentioned, I'm looking at a graphic right now. It's currently on 15 streaming platforms, so you can watch it wherever you want. Um, But, you know, he sold it as being one of the best movies that he was showing on his show. And I mean, most of his stuff is, you know, not not, you know, award winning show uh, movies anyway. But um one thing that I learned from it is that the big guy, he also was the mo- martial arts coach for the fund manager, the the dad. Yeah. So that was actually something that oh, he like, cool. like before the movie happened. So I thought that was interesting. The other thing I thought was really cool about this movie, we talked about it already, but the zombies and the way that they moved, they actually had a, cho- a choreographer do all of that. So there was a person that was training oh, these people oh, to, to move and like, move their arms in these weird directions or whatever so that is actual like humans doing that it's not animation um the animation comes with all of the like extras and like the thousands of zombies but the main Mm -hmm. ones that are doing those like weird body contortions are actually humans doing that so i thought that that was really interesting that's real that that gives it that extra you know like you said not the cg bullshit you know yep um and then a couple other things that i noted about this movie so when you look this up on Google, now I, I this is the first time I've noticed that this when I watched when I looked up this movie, they give you the movie in a nutshell, and it's three words to describe this movie. And I actually think that it was the three words that I wouldn't pick. It was thrilling, gruesome, and terrifying. Um, that definitely wasn't gruesome. No, it wasn't gruesome. Yeah, it wasn't as gruesome as I thought. No, like it was a little bloody, but it wasn't anything that significant you know right and i find it interesting that those are the three because like again that plays into the generic nature of the like description and movie because i think that there's a lot of drama in this that is like really important to the overall story so i'm kind of upset that that didn't come up in there because like gruesome is that one word i would have taken out i think there's a lot of terrifying elements to this of course uh because it felt like it could be real um so i just thought that that was really interesting that they picked those words it just feels like there's ai doing it rather than an actual human that is actually watching this or understood it or like pulling from you know different reviews so i almost feel like this movie if you look it up it does a disservice to it you just kind of have to watch it and enjoy it and like really pay attention to it because you're seeing something that is really special the runtime is an hour it's 117 minutes which to me is way too long, but they jam packed so much into here, and it was it was fantastic through and through. I totally yeah, I think agree. that's what 
what's interesting too is that like i've heard recommendations from people about this movie like and different people too like not necessarily those who like the same type of stuff and it's like consistently it's just like it's great you have to see it and i think for me i kind of took a, a, little, a little bit of a grain of salt depending on who said it and i think rob you might have mentioned it before it's just like I think for me, some of them were people who I didn't think were really super familiar with zombie movies, like maybe just kind of got in with like Walking Dead. So like they're saying this because it's like, oh, it's like an intense zombie movie. And it's like, all right, I've seen a ton of those. So like I almost didn't take the recommendation um, like seriously enough because I'm thinking based again, based on the description, too, it's like oh, there's a million of these. So like you must just be new to the zombie movies. And then for people like um, Icker Standard, who's a huge horror fan to kind of recommend recommend this and say like hey this is something good that kind of caught my attention because it's like okay that means there's something different about this particular movie so it is interesting that like the common thread is people just like really praise it and then it's just kind of like well, what what's the thing like what's the praiseworthy thing and i think what i appreciate is that nobody ever said it was that story dynamic you know um so I think I went into it thinking it was going to be something more in that horrors, you know, something with the zombies themselves. But the fact that it was really around how like the characters react to this apocalyptic situation um, was was cool. So I, I think that was like an interesting part just about the reviews in general. I think for me, they kind of like like they, they registered for me, but they didn't really give me any real expectations. So it's a I, I feel like I did go into it with like a positive expectation, but not like a huge expectation. Um, and it left me still feeling like pleasantly surprised at the end of it. So based on all of this, you know, we heard from uh, from all of us, but we also heard from Icarus Standard, as you mentioned, who ranked this movie as one of the best zombie movies of all time. And he's not the only one that's given his that level of praise. After watching the movie, I went ahead and I went to Amazon. I was going to go pick up uh, the 4K copy of the movie because I wanted it to be part of my collection. So then... As I'm scrolling through, there was a graphic that showed uh, some of the critical acclaim that this movie got, which the funniest one that I saw was from the critic is noted as horror movies. They put it as the best zombie movie in the last 10 years. So this movie was released in 2016. So now I don't know how you guys classify those 10 years, but I went ahead and I pulled out some key zombie movies that came out since 2006 if we want to count 2006 or if we have to move into 2007 we'll just kind of see if that makes sense but uh let's see where this movie does fit in in those rankings so let's start with 2006 here are a few movies that came out zombie movies that came out in this year black sheep which was um i think from an irish movie that uh had sheep that turned into zombies or turn people into Chris, zombies. I thought it was a Chris Farley movie. <laughs> <laughs> kind of wish it was. There was Dorm of the Dead, which I believe was also a George Romero, like one of his last uh, zombie movies, I think. There was Poultry Geist, Night of the Chicken Dead, which I have not seen. And Clive Barker's The Plague. To be quite honest, I haven't seen any of these movies, so maybe we have to strike out 2006. And we can look at 2007 and see where that falls. We have I Am Legend, Wreck, Resident Evil Extinction, Planet Terror, Flight of the Living Dead, Outbreak on a Plane, Diary of the Dead, and 28 Weeks Later. Planet, of Planet all Terror... The is fucking amazing. Excuse my language. I sorry. I have the kid in the thing. And it's actually one of the lines from that movie was what I was going to say when my son was born. Boys got the devil in them, but I I didn't say that, but I would put that up there in like the best zombie movies. And I actually really like 28 weeks later a lot too. That was a good um, one too. I I like I thought that that one was I like 28 days later and I think 28 weeks later, I mean it's more action. And I just, I felt like I enjoyed that one a lot. But Mike, I don't know if you have any thoughts on any of these movies, especially Resident Evil Extinction. I don't know if you, you care about that one. No, that I can F take a pass on. Resident Evil <laughs> movies. I, I, let, let them die. Let them shoot them in the head and put them in the grave, okay? <laughs> yeah, for me, like, I really enjoyed Wreck. 
a lot. So that one resonates for me. Um, I am legend. It's weird. It's more of like a soft spot because they were actually filming it near my job. So like I would Yeah, your job gets um, blown up in it. Yeah. So like I would be going to work and I actually see blown up cars like in the on the side of the road, which was kind of cool. So um that's more of a soft spot, but I think that for me, movie, you know, re- that movie is like was okay, but when they killed the dog, dude. I'm sorry. I know <laughs> it's like that was just like F you. Yeah, but yeah, for me, Wreck is something what a movie I actually really enjoyed a lot. So, you know, that would I guess that would stand that out one. for me. All right, so now I think we've established it. 2007 is what they're talking about when they're saying 10 years because there's a lot of great zombie movies that came out. Yeah, because that, that 06 list is garbage. So. Yeah. So then now, keeping that in mind, I pulled out what came out in those other years leading up to 2016 to see if maybe they missed something. So I'm going to run through these pretty quick. 2008, there was Quarantine with Jennifer Carpenter from um, Dexter. The, the sister from De- Dexter. And I, yeah. I had no idea that was actually a remake of that, Wreck. That was the remake. Yeah. That's the one I saw. I wish I yeah. saw Wreck because I heard it's 10 times better. Yeah. Um, I haven't seen Wreck. So yeah, I, I've only seen Quarantine and whatever. Um, there was Dance of the Dead. Obviously, there's always an Of the Dead movie that's coming out every year. And there's Zombie, Zombie, Zombies. Um, I've only seen Quarantine out of that and definitely not a contender of best. 2009, there was Dead Snow, Night of the Living Dead reanimated. Um, I, I, they just keep remaking that movie over and over. There was Survival of the Dead. That was actually another Romero movie. And then there was Zombieland. I actually didn't care for Zombieland. I don't know if you guys like that. I started watching it. I couldn't really get into it either. I mean, I'll watch. I'll end up watching it one day. Um, but I don't know. It, it, it didn't really do anything for me. Yeah, I and I for me, I mean, obviously it's a zombie movie because it's in the title, but like I looked at it definitely more as a comedy. So like from that aspect, I enjoyed it, and I have a soft spot for Woody Harrelson, and obviously a soft spot for Bill Murray. So um, I checked the boxes for me. Then we have in two thousand and ten, One of the Dead, uh, Resident Evil Afterlife. And the crazies a, a remake. I haven't seen the the remake of this, so I don't know. I only wanted it... to see the crazies because Timothy Oliphant in it, and I have like a crush on him. So, yeah. Uh, and Resident Evil After Afterlife is terrible, so definitely not on that list. Two thousand eleven. You didn't like the you didn't like all the three D stuff, Rob. Or when they throw the axe and like it comes at the screen. I thought I was get my head was gonna get chopped off. You know what? This might be the the greatest in the decade, then. Um, 2011, there was The Cabin in the Woods. I haven't seen that. I, I heard good things about it. You though. haven't seen that? No, oh, I, like I plan to watch it. Yeah, you'd like oh, it, dude. Man. Okay, it's you good. gotta watch it's a good that. Movie. Yeah. Like, it might not hit you as hard now, but that's a good movie. <laughs> that was a good movie. Yeah, you'd like it. Okay. Uh, so this is... I, I base this off of Wikipedia and what they describe as zombie movies. So Pirates of the Caribbean on Stranger Tides came up. Um, I don't know if it's a zombie movie. I guess they technically have... I wouldn't call that a zombie movie. I mean, there's zombies yeah, in it. But... Like, come on. The, the, the... the Johnny Depp bullshit? Yeah. yeah. Nah, that's, not, that's not a fucking zombie movie. <laughs> and then there's Quarantine 2, which I had no idea was made. 2012 had Abraham Lincoln versus zombies. Oh, that sounds great. Cockneys versus zombies. And now that Resident I Evil. want to say. I want to see Cockney. That actually we should do a whole because that looks freaking great. Did you see the trailer for that? Yes. I th- I think I watched some of it. I haven't seen the whole movie. With the old dude from Snatch, and he's just like, you can't understand a word he's freaking saying. It's so great. So all right, sorry. Anyway, continue. Yeah. And then Resident Evil Retribution. Oh, um, that is actually my favorite of them. Yeah. Because we get creepy uh, Leon Kennedy. <laughs> Had a good score, too. That, yeah, that, that beginning scene, that song was awesome. I, yeah. Wow, this is sad. Like, I'm finding good things with the Resident Evil movies. Rob, no, no, don't, don't, do just do stop. What did stop. you do to me? <laughs> stop. That's trauma. <laughs> 2013 has Bat Salt Zombies. Warm Bodies and World War Z. 
World War Z book was way better. Way yeah. freaking better. I read the book. I don't I've never seen the movie and I've never played the video game. It's not that good, the movie. I didn't like it. It's Is nothing like good. It. What the hell do I know? I know I buy a lot of games, Mike, but come on. It's on Game Pass. <laughs> 2014 has Life After Beth, Doc of the Dead, and Zombievers. I saw Zombievers. How was it? It sucks. It's exactly what you think. CG Zombievers. They're they're <laughs> they're zombies and beavers. Zombievers. Fantastic. And then 2000... the best the best. No, no, oh, oh, no, that's right. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, uh, no, 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 yeah, we're, okay. we're, we're holding. We're yeah, holding. there's a redacted one on that list. 2015, as Navy SEALs versus Zombies, Scouts Guide to the Zombie Apocalypse, Maggie, and The Walking Deceased. Wasn't Maggie that BS Arnold Schwarzenegger, I Want to Be the Last of Us movie? Yes. Uh, I haven't seen that one. Oh, is that what that I is? Yeah. Wait, wait, I heard good things about it. it. Buddy? Come on. It's, I mean, come on, it's Arnie. Wait, wait, it's dramatic, you know, like Maggie, Maggie, <laughs> you zombie. 2016 has Pandemic, Resident Evil, the final chapter, The Wailing, and Train to Busan. You know that that's BS, Rob, because Resident Evil, the final chapter came out in 2017. We saw it in January. They're wrong. We're right. They're wrong. Yes, what is this is all doing? Wikipedia that is doing this. This is not my list. This is Wikipedia's list. We are right. Just to our audience, it came out in 2017. What was it, like February or something? Yep. Because I remember we saw it together. So whoever wrote that is an a-hole. <laughs> Sorry if you, like, you know, like you went through a really hard time or anything. But if not, then you're an a-hole. No, it seems like it was edited by Pete. So I think based off of this list, yes, it was the best of that decade. Matt, where do you sit this movie in your overall scheme of 150 zombie movies that you've seen and that you enjoy? So for my psycho, like I make lists and this is kind of weird and creepy and crazy to like calm my brain down. And I think I would put it in like maybe like the 40s. So that would be where Hellraiser Bloodlines, VHS 2, American Werewolf in London, Dawn of the Dead, the original, Mandy, The Shining. I put it in between there somewhere. Wow, Dawn of the Dead is in the 40s? Well, that, the thing is, though, it's like the movie, and it's funny because like Hellraiser Bloodlines is 40, which is like funny, but it's like I have like special uh, significance to that movie. But let's see if I have any zombie films above that. Um, oh, so Tower. this is overall zombie. This is overall movies that you have. These are overall horror movies, yeah. Okay. Sorry, I, I didn't reiterate that I didn't see every zombie film, but I'm trying to see. If De oh, Dead Alive is probably the. Well, if you count Evil Dead, I don't think they. I would count them as zombies, but yeah. I would have Dead Alive as my favorite zombie movie. Then. Interesting. I watched that recently. I, I feel like it doesn't hold up as well. Oh, really? Now. Yeah. That's but I, I, I gotta watch it again, though. But it's still yeah. a great movie. This movie's still a great movie. That's, yeah. that's the bottom I mean, line. I mean, at the end of the day, I think that this was a, a fantastic choice. Um, I think it really was. I'm glad that we all watched it because this is one of those movies that after I watched it, all I wanted to do was talk about it. Um, and I was like, kind of just like waiting for you guys to actually get to see it because um, I wanted to hear, you know, your thoughts. And then just, I, I just thought it was incredible. So we send our thanks to at Icarus Standard for the suggestion. Let us know your thoughts on the train to Busan. And are there other movies that you want to recommend to us that we should check out? Maybe there's something that's not on Matt's 150 psycho zombie killer list. Everything or... list. Oh, oh, it's the everything or list. Everything. Okay. The thing is number one, just to let everyone know. So that's a great movie. It's For all your nonsense, check us out on all podcast platforms and on YouTube. It's been real, it's been good, but it wasn't real good. <laughs>